In April of 2019, I put out a video called How to Crucify Your Flesh. The Bible clearly tells you how to do it. I have since removed that video from my channel, although it was a popular video. I mean, I don't have a big channel and it had over 5,000 views, a lot of engagement, a lot of comments, some good, some bad, be that as it may. Of course, that's always going to be the way it is. However, in that video, I focused solely on the outside, thinking at that time, because I was in the John the Baptist mindset, you know, where the external, you know, focusing on the outside, hoping that that would somehow change the inside, that stopping smoking and swearing and all these other things, while they are, while they are wise things to do, they don't do anything to crucify your flesh, which really means to put the flesh aside. Now, you could stop smoke. You you could be a non-smoker and and a, and a not crucify your flesh. You could be um, the most honest person in the world and still have not crucified your flesh. See, that's the problem. And honestly, it doesn't take work on your part to do it now that might sound counterintuitive but i'm going to read you a chapter from one of my favorite books now that i've read recently so it's one of my favorite books the temple not made with hands by walter c lanyon and in this chapter it's called setting the captives free and my friends if you're listening to this video it is so liberating so liberating. I ask of you just to listen to it with an open mind and you make your decision upon that. I can't tell you what to do or what not to do. This is not somewhere where you come for dogmatic Christian values. No, this is somewhere where I share my, my findings with y'all and you make your opinions based on that, depending where you are in your walk. So let us begin setting the captive free caught in the prison of conscious thinking which is engendered by the long history of your case there is no more escape for you than there was for jesus human destiny will fulfill itself without a question of a doubt and nothing can alter it or change the way of it except a man find the christ within your prison house of conscious thinking is made up of all the facts of your human nature, your race, creed, color, education, birth, breeding, personality, and all. These are the bars against which you are leaning and pressing, trying to escape when there is no escape. It is true that for the space of a moment or so, you may shake all yourself free from some of the hateful pictures only to return again to your dungeon of hopelessness. And I'm going to inject in here. That's the sin, repent, sin, repent cycle that we all found ourselves in at one time or another. And by the way, what sin means missing the mark, but we'll go into all that as, as the chapter goes on. It's not what I said it was in previous videos. I was just flat out and out wrong. Jesus Christ came bringing the way of escape from this hateful destiny and heritage of evil, realizing how futile it was to try to escape from the human destiny through the human mind. He early discovered that I could of myself do nothing, but the moment he recognized the presence, or God, he instantly not only dissolved the destiny that was functioning at that point, but revealed the picture of heaven on earth. So sure of this was Jesus that he permitted his human destiny to function into the pictures all along the way, setting it aside the last instant to show just what the Christ power was and how very, and how very instant and powerful it was when recognized. To pause in the flurry of evil, which has suddenly appeared in your human destiny and recognize the presence of God is to shatter all the evil circumstances and conditions and to bring about the surprise which must have filled the Magdalene 
on looking round and finding no man there to accuse her. The picture of her human destiny was destruction, and all the elements of the climax were drawing in. There was no escape for her. The destiny was to be fulfilled. Then, in the twinkling of an eye, the whole picture, so real and terrible, was shattered as if a secret force had blown it into nothingness. It is magical to the human sense that the thing which seems to be impossible becomes the natural action of power. The worker of the impossible, the Christ within you, is not concerned with the hard, fast limitations of matter which can be dissolved and wiped out with more ease than dust may pass away in a hurricane. Too long has man spent fighting the appearances but as the hateful destiny closes in upon him, he realizes he is at the point where the time is too short to argue or right set or to do anything of himself. He is driven into an impasse, faced with the Red Sea, hedged in with the jagged cliffs, pursued by the armies of Pharaoh. It is too late to make any kind of truce. As far as he is concerned, the destiny has caught up with him and it is about to take its pound of flesh, which means his life. No good turn and fight against the appearances. They are too strong and terrible and real. The end of the whole thing is so evident, but at that instant, recognition of the presence shatters, wipes out, and puts to flight that which seems so inevitable. It is thrilling to comp uh, contemplate the presence, and the capacity of this power which lies within every man to realize that the walls of Jericho which seem so impassable and formidable crumble away like so much sand. So does the power raise the high walls which are shutting you away from your heaven. So aware of this power was Jesus that he even permitted the human destiny of death to function. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? Where is the Father? And what are the angels? And what do you suppose would have happened to the hateful picture of his human destiny if he had chosen at that instant to recognize or call upon the Father? Whatsoever you ask in my name would have come to pass, and the story of the crucifixion would have been missing from the records. Gloriously, he submitted to the severest test of the human destiny to show that nothing the human mind could do to him was real or had power. Moses, putting his hand into his bosom and drawing it out white with leprosy and replacing it again in his bosom and bringing it out in perfect health, indicates what the power of the Christ within is capable of doing. Leprosy is not a disease which comes or goes out to clamor with the midnight and fight against principalities of darkness and the human destiny. If you be in the spirit, you are no more under the law. The law of what? The law of your own belief in your destiny. Jesus came setting aside the human patterns of life and showing man how to come unto me instead of trying to use me as a bottle of medicine. The moment a man turns to this power, he automatically causes the entire outside picture to change. Whether this be one of disease, sin, danger, fear, or any of the so-called laws of fate. The Christ power is not concerned with the working out of the human mind. It makes no difference how its laws are upset. When the man cannot account for an unexpected turn of events, which according to his best findings could not possibly happen, he charges it off to coincidence, an act of God, or a misunderstanding on his part. And the sooner he can forget about this irregularity, the more he is pleased. It matters not how much the mortal mind and its beliefs are inconvenienced by the actions of the Christ. It is true, it may be inconvenient to have a picture of death destroyed, and a person restored to perfect health instantly as far as his inheritors are concerned, but that means nothing to the presence. Think not that I came to destroy, I came to fulfill. Do you hear? 
anything that is not fulfilling the destiny of heaven here and now is the human picture of the unawakened mind, and it will be broken up the instant you call upon me. What matter how far it has gone, even if it be the eleventh hour and the doom is sealed, it is not too late to so completely overturn the creation of evil that its awful majesty, which came at you in one way, the only way was to was open for you to escape, and stood glaring at you in your hopelessness, shall flee from you in ten ways. Call upon me, do you hear? It is something that you can do in the midst of the fearful manifestations of disease and sin and poverty. Call upon me, and I will smash the pictures of your human destiny, just as the pictures of forty years which had solidified themselves about the beggar at the temple gates were destroyed in an instant just as the pictures of death, decay, and decomposition were wiped out by the presence in an instant when Lazarus was called forth. All the science of that day and this regarding, and this regarding death was made as naught. Handle it as it may. Explain it as best as it could. Finally, charge it off to a miracle and let the matters rest. The old human mind, which had the point of death so well established that it seemed impossible to uproot it, was put to flight at the moment the presence was recognized. What are you waiting on? You, do you want to make a demonstration against evil? Or do you want to go out and argue against its reality and see if you can defeat it? There is nothing to defeat but the conscious thinking which comes under the law. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is too strange and terrible to imagine that this human destiny rests in the conscious thinking, and that from that level nothing can be done or against it. The pictures of limitations are completely obliterated by turning to the Father within and allowing his power to do the work. My Father worketh hitherto, and I work is the law of instant and perfect success and self-expression. You cannot do it any more than Jesus the carpenter could possibly have been an orator. He knew this and turned from himself the recognition to the recognition of the presence which burst the limitations of what he could or could not do. So the thing that keeps you from self-expression or fills you with fear or stage fright is your human destiny functioning at full speed. To fight, this is a hopeless game. But suppose for a moment you could call upon me and see the presence come through into manifestation, nullifying all the evil, the inability, the failure, the lack, snapping the bonds that have held you for so long. You're not going to do it. It is this glorious power, Christ within you. In your reality, your I am expressing in its own splendid, untrammeled way. It asks no favors or permissions to perform. It follows not cull from the wastebasket of life, used postage stamps. It is carte blanche. It is the passport into all countries. It is the peculiar understanding, excuse me, it is the peculiar understandable thing which goes ahead, prepares the way, and at the same time remains with you. It is that which instantly destroys the illusions about you and reveals the kingdom of heaven here and now. Conscious thinking is the glass darkly through which you are gazing at the kingdom of heaven. But you see, it is so distorted by the crooked lens of your vision that you see everything in wrong proportions. The laws of the madhouse of conscious thinking are these. When I would do good, I do evil. And... As for man, his days are few and full of trouble, and a lot of other things that are equally hateful. The final estimate that all turns into vanity, dust, and the grave. That is the picture of conscious thinking. That is why Jesus assured that you could not see heaven through the human thinking or the glass darkly. When you have recognized just what it is that Jesus discovered and how he insisted on turning to the power within and judging not from appearances but righteous judgment, you will understand. 
Now, through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Face to face with the truth of being, you die to the human destiny. Yes, you are a new man in Christ Jesus. There are thousands of things to happen to you. Even eventually the transforming of the body and the setting aside of the thing called death. There is no death in spirit. You can die only in human thinking. From being born under a certain sign and under certain predestined influences, man discovers that he is born of spirit and partakes of the nature of spirit. Just as soon as he recognizes this, that all old conscious thinking ideas and manifestations drop away from him and he stands revealed, self-revealed. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Do you hear? Not the temporary light, which resolves itself into darkness with the turning on of the earth on its axis, but the inner light of self-revelation, which nothing can extinguish and which shines out in the blackest hell and causes heaven to appear. No matter how long this darkness has been about you, it is instantly dispelled by the light. Darkness is never overcome. Darkness is never overcome as it has no power to be overcome. You do not need to fight. Set yourself and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you begin to see the priceless gift which Jesus has given us? It is too wonderful, awe-inspiring, for the superficial seeker of truth to grasp. He is still peeping through the bars of his prison house of conscious thinking, hoping to incorporate this glorious light with the pattern of his personality for personal gain. Why personal gain? when all that the Father has is yours. Do you believe this? And if not, what are you trying to do? Take something that does not belong to you? Be still, be very still. Suddenly you will hear the new revelation of the presence in you. As you read along, the light of this inner Christ is shedding its presence on you and whispers in your being, you can. What a word. When it's said from the spirit and removed from conscious thinking, which has tried every which way and found that you cannot. You can because it is not you, but Christ in you, which does the work. Thus, do you speak to the poor, tired manifestations of you, which has struggled so long and so nobly against the pictures of human foreordination? You can has nothing to do with the human willpower. It is the actual power and presence in action. It is glorious and wonderful. You are beginning to see the way of secrecy and the way of self-revelation and the way of freedom from conscious thinking. You do not have to set anything aright, nor change anything. The coming of the presence will take care of all that. The light of the presence will absorb all the darkness of accumulated belief. It is related that in the World War, a small company of men were run into a cul-de-sac from which there was no escape. The enemy was closing in on them. It meant certain death. Suddenly something happened. The impossible situation was destroyed. What was it? Confusion set in among the pursuers. A sudden fog arose. The enemy became lost and could not find its way. The destiny of death which was surely meant to be fulfilled at that instant was abrogated. And by what? Someone had a consciously, had uh, as consciously or unconsciously called upon the presence, and the pictures of conscious thinking vanished. What was the report of it all? A hundred different stories were told. Some saw the Christ, some saw the virgins, some a fog bank. According to their symbol of protection did their mortal eyes see that which stood for the abstract presence of protection. Do you begin to see what it means to recognize this power as present? It is not overcoming evil. It is revealing the kingdom of heaven. Presently, when we become conscious of the present sufficiently, we shall also see the destiny of human death flee from before this light of life eternal. Yes, the teachings of Jesus suddenly take on a new meaning, the meaning of revelation instead of overcoming. The taking of of attention away from appearances is something more 
than hiding your eyes from evil. But when it, do, when it is done in the way of Jesus, appointing, when the eyes rest upon the situation again, it has disappeared, and even the place thereof is no more. Yes, neither shall it come into mind, so complete and absolute is the way of this presence. The wisdom of man is foolishness in the eyes of God. When man comes to realize this, he will see that no wisdom which evil has brought to bear upon his case is anything but foolishness to power, to the power. No matter though it no matter though it have bulwarks of reality as mighty as the Great Wall of China, with the recognition of the presence they will crumble and run down as much fine sand that cannot withstand the faintest zephyr. Do you hear? Do you hear the revelation of the Spirit within the inner depth of you saying, Fear not, I am with you always. It is wonderful, glorious, and the new day is even now, showing the first faint flushes of the coming dawn of spirituality. Your human destiny is giving place to your divine manifestation. I shall overturn and overturn and overturn until he, com until he comes whose place it is to rule. And no matter what is overturned, how time-honored, respected, as wisdom of the conscious thinking, it is nothing, it is worthless, must and will go before this glorious presence. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It is beautiful, and I would ask you to listen to it again and again and again. Uh, you might want to get the book. Again, it's The Temple Not Made with Hands by Walter C. Lanyon. This is beautiful. When you come to the realization, when you stop looking at things as evil, when you only see God in everything, your heart and mind will change. It has nothing to do, once you realize that, that the tradi traditions and teachings and all the baggage and garbage just needs to go away. And once it does, and you only see God, and only the presence, and that's all you live for, and that's all you recognize, you recognize it in you and in everyone else, you will see how your life will change incredibly and dramatically, and how your life around you changes, because you're not attracting, you know, you're not attracting the bad stuff to you anymore, because it has nothing to do with you, it flees from you. Right? Call on the name of God and evil will flee. The devil will flee from you. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, give it a like, share. Uh, if you want to leave your comments, you're more than welcome to. Go ahead, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you can say whatever you want. Um, thank you again, and we'll see you soon. Bye now. <laughs>